Hi, this is Tim. Welcome to our PLC Programming Methods to Sequence Machine series. In this series, we're going to be simulating a machine with some basic buttons and lights. It's going to start with the green light on, and when we press the green button, the yellow light's going to come on. We press the yellow button, the red light's going to come on. Just to add a little bit of variability, pressing the red button won't make it go to the next step, but we need to press and hold it for one second, and then the blue light will come on. And finally, pressing the blue button will start the process all over. While this is a really simple thing we're doing here, this can easily be scaled to any machine. And the best part about the methods we're showing here is they are compatible with all Allen Bradley PLCs. From the Control Logics and Compact Logics for Studio 5000, formerly RS Logics 500, to RS Logics 500 for the MicroLogics and the Slick 500, and even the Connected Components Workbench for the Micro 800 PLC. Actually, these are probably compatible with most brands of PLCs because they use basic programming fundamentals. Now, I'm not a fan of all these methods, but you will run into them out of the field. And I debated what order to put these in, and I decided to put them from the one I'm most likely to do, to the one I am the least likely to do. And that doesn't mean the ones on the tail end are necessarily the worst. They're just the ones, in my opinion, that I wouldn't use to program. In our previous lesson, we went through how to track a machine process with a counter. And while that one works great, in this lesson, I'm gonna show you a concern I have as the process becomes more involved. Also, if you didn't catch the previous lesson, I'll put a link to this whole series down in the description. And this was extracted out of a live stream, so it is not perfect. This can get to scrolling a whole lot if it grew much. Also, I don't like that this timer is stuck down here. And I did this one first exactly like this, because this is similar to what I see, and it's similar to what I did in my first one. But something that a lot of people don't know you can do is you can have multiple counters to the same instruction. If we look at our second Studio 5000 example, I've done this. So here, here are the branches, exactly the same as we have in connected components in one counter. But I can break this up. See, this is sequence counter. This is sequence counter. Actually, counter is plural because this is a different one. Sequence counter is plural. Sequence counter is plural. Sequence counter is plural. So I have three count up counters going to the same tag. And I think this makes it easier to read if you're troubleshooting. Because really, okay, sequence step zero, one, two. And most importantly, I can combine this timer now into this really nicely so that when I'm on step two and I'm trying to figure out what is wrong, it's gonna be really clear that either it's waiting on this or it's waiting on this. I'm not gonna have to scroll or search or anything like that to go find it. So we're just gonna modify our Connected Components Workbench program now to be like that. And this shouldn't be difficult. We should be able to, well, we got we got some obstacles here. As first, when we did the TON, you notice I renamed this. Well, I haven't done this one yet. And here's where, yeah, it's gonna become much more important is I can double click here now. Oh, I gotta go offline. Yeah, um, and I could do run mode edits, but I know a lot of you are using uh, the free version, so that's not an option. So I'm just gonna go offline and do all my edits that way. But if I double click on this, and then the instance down here, I can name this my sequence counter. And, man, you know, this does work. I'm not sure why we're getting this occasionally, <laughs> but um, it works fine. Uh, this is version 13, and yeah, this is my first video with version 13, so there may be a few things that I'm not aware of on it. All right, but so now our counter is called sequence counter. Now I'm going to highlight this rung, I'm going to right click it, and I am going to copy this rung, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to paste once, paste twice, and we're going to paste a third time, giving us four copies of that same wrong. And even now, it's really difficult to figure out where you're at because this, this is slightly large for this, um, with the font size and everything I'm using. That bottom one's getting truncated. But okay, notice when you create those like that, oh man, why did somebody tell me I spelled counter wrong? Oh, well, you guys got to keep an eye on me. We're going to fix that. We're going to go down here to the first one, which is actually at the bottom now. And we're going to rename it to sequence counter. And 
But now I can go up to this next one. See, even as I scroll, it's a little difficult to find it. And I'm going to make that instance the exact same. I was going to make this one counter. And then I'm going to change this instance to counter. And finally, this one to counter. So this is going to make them all address the exact same thing. And now what I'm going to do is, okay, this first one is going to be for my green button or sequence number zero green button. So I'm going to highlight here and I'm going to delete that. Delete. Oops, control Z. Did something wrong there. Highlight there and hit the delete. Highlight there and hit the delete. So that now is sequence one or sequence zero. So now on the next wrong, I'm going to delete this one. And then I'll highlight number two, delete, number three, delete. And then this one, it's going to be number two, delete, delete, delete. And then on this one, it will be the final one. So delete, delete, delete. All right. Now, we have this TON, which I didn't like, stranded down here anyway. So I'm going to copy it now. I'll just right-click make sure I right-click that way. Y'all see exactly what I do. And then we go up here to sequence number two, and here's where we're looking at that. I'm going to put a branch in here. I'm going to drag this in, and I'm going to drag this in, and I'm going to put that TON right here. And I just think that's going to make it read so much better and make it where we can, I think it will make our troubleshooting a lot better. So now we can delete this. And if I've done all this right, this should work exactly the same way. So sequence zero, green button counts. Sequence one, yellow button counts. Sequence two, red button after a certain amount of time counts. And finally, the blue button counts in sequence three. And then sequence four, greater than or equal to, should reset the sequence. Here's where it's always scary doing a live stream and doing this without any testing is I, I feel this should work. So let's, let's give it a shot and find out. Well, look at there, unable to download due to build error. So red button delay queue, undeclared identifier. Oh, okay. Well, there you go again. When it copied and pasted, and, I, and maybe this, does anybody know, is there a way to turn this off? Because this does get annoying. It says you're copying and pasting this, it's always wanting to increment, which I guess they're doing so you don't end up with a bunch of duplicates, but it's, um, it's a real headache. So I hit the build button. Let's make sure there's no issues now. And we look good. So we're going to download that. Okay, so let's see how this works. It should work exactly the same. So I press the green button, yellow light comes on. I press the yellow button, the red light comes on. Now I can sit there and kind of peck on this and nothing happens. But I press and hold that and you're ever going to get a blue light. And we press it again and we're going to do that again now because I didn't realize it was not on full screen. But yeah, green button shifts it to the yellow. Yellow button shifts it to the red. That doesn't work. We've got to have that for one second. Goes to green, goes to blue, whatever that color is. And then we hit it again and it goes to the green. So this code right here does exactly the same as our previous code. But I just, I think this is much easier to troubleshoot later on. I wish I'd, oh man, and here's where I was going to create a new program every time. And this is why, and I will do that from now on, is I would love to go back and look. Well, I did create all the Studio 5000 programs. So we can see it here is if we look at this one, this is the way it was written. But if we had 20 different conditions or 20 steps, it would get really to be a pain scrolling this and coming back up and figuring this counter out. Whereas really breaking this up into the individual ones it definitely makes it easier. 
So I hope this video has been helpful. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. Next, we're going to show you a few links, including the PLC programming methods to sequence machine series. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.